If you're going to tackle a major issue like diversity, you really have to lead from the top. Unless it's led by chief executive level, then the kind of change that you can effect will not be transformational. You will severely limit what you can achieve. I think the thing about diversity is that it has to be owned by the whole organisation and that starts at the top. So it starts with me as chief executive, it starts with our executive leadership, our board, crucially, uh, and our whole artistic leadership. And we have to demonstrate both why it's important and that we believe it's important. If you work for an orchestra and the senior people aren't grasping this, then I think it's something that you should do yourself. Some of the most important influential people on this agenda in my organisation are at completely different levels. Um, part of my job is harnessing their talent. Part of their job is keeping the foot on the pedal and pushing me. Go to your chief executive or your decision makers, tell them what your ambition is, tell them what you think should be the ambition of the organisation, tell them you cannot do it on your own and that you need their help. So a roadmap for an organisation that's starting out on this journey might be something like this. First of all, Diversity 101, which is really because you have to. So it's about funding, it's about compliance. You do it fundamentally because it's a requirement. That's fine, but it's never going to really add value. You've got to move on to Diversity 2.0, which is around marketing and communications and actually engaging with new audiences. And then finally, Diversity 3.0, or real inclusion, where you're doing this because actually the sum totality of a diverse gene pool gives you greater creative output, better commercial success, and you're doing it because you want to, because actually it's part of making the organisation more successful. If change is going to happen, it's got to be something that is baked into the very core of the values of the whole of the organisation. It's something that should be absolutely central to the artistic programming and to the, the whole lifeblood of the orchestral organisation. Everyone at the top of the organisation has to agree that it is our mission to change that. And I think the rest does flow from there. Uh, the motivation for us to really build diversity into every bit of our organisation is fundamentally about delivering our vision. Uh, it relates to music, to our musicians, to our audiences and our place in the city. Diversity just runs through all of that. I'm really not interested in little initiatives that will draw people's attention. I want to only make changes where they are sustainable, they are things that we are prepared to put our weight behind as a group and invest potentially considerable amount of effort and time in making happen just the way that we see them happening. Don't get beaten down by the things beyond our control, but let's make step-by-step -step change. You cannot change everything at once. And I would always advise people to choose one thing that you really feel you can change and is going to be impactful. And we thought as a performing arts company, what you see on the stage is going to be the obvious thing to change. There is no resistance now. I mean, the company has literally transformed Nobody would dream, I think, of thinking we need to step backwards to how things were. I think one of the things that I'd be really keen to see are those organisations and those orchestras who want to take a lead in this and really challenge the status quo, to actually ask those difficult questions, to behave in a different way and to be real sector leaders that we can look at and say they're doing it right, everyone else should be following them. It's fantastic this year that the National Youth Orchestra is 22% non-white British and that isn't because of any particular thing that we've done, apart from um, over the last 10 years make ourselves more available and more friendly and reach out. But that does make us the most diverse orchestra in the country and that is good news for everything that happens next. I think it's really, really important that people who are in receipt of public money uh, make sure that that money is being spent on all parts of society. People who lead publicly funded organisations in the 21st century should make diversity and inclusion an absolute priority. And if they don't, I wonder whether they're still the right people for the job. I'm really optimistic actually about change in relation to diversity in our sector. I think we're at a tipping point. I think we both know that we have to change, but also I can see the opportunity for us to do so. And I can see the will across the sector. And I can see people coming into the sector who are not prepared to put up with the way things were. 
So I'm confident that in 10 years' time, we won't have solved it because you never solve it completely, but we will have moved on.